So the the, sh the shepherd dog appears before me with the three black moos. <laughs> oh, I can't make this stuff up. This is where I get my messages from. <laughs> so interesting. Um, so they turn up at, on in the west, in uh, other person's land, so far neighbor's property, not mine. They're so close because of the electric fence. So each party believes they can come closer to each other with safety between, with frequency between. Now here we're going, and he's staring straight at me. Usually, they say when you know animals stare at you, they're ready to fight. Right. But I didn't. I felt like he was observing. I felt like he. I felt like he knew I knew now. Yeah. And he knew that I knew, and and even this I've heard in the last few days a lot, like the knowing, and when do you know? And the more you know, the less you know, and all this sort of stuff. And it's true because you're just um, new versions of yourself all the time, letting go of the old versions of yourself with new versions coming through. So that's why it's very important not to get stuck in a time zone. <laughs> <laughs> because it creates an anchor. These are the verbs. Yeah. It's oh, the, the verb words. It, it, uh, it, it, time it, I relate it to almost what you're saying in terms of, not, not politically, but in terms of people trying to group, meet each other or see each other from a perspective of their, of their own. And, 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 as, and as you know, here we had the, the, the vote yesterday and uh, the elections which was a very energetic, energized uh, uh, moment. And so many people hung, hanging on to a specific way of, 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 of control and opinion. Um, but but it was, the energy was very palpable. Um, as, as you speak about the, 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 the direction of the West, when I take my dog to this park where I walk, to the West is a white, a white deer all white with no no pigment whatsoever and sometimes i think it's a reminder you know of as you said the cleansing and the cleansing that somehow i experienced to some degree um by the shedding of hair follicles <laughs> or or, or <laughs> the the release um yeah so when when you you pass this information on um we we had the um understanding of something like the dog prophecy that's taking place mm -hmm. and, and while i i have an understanding i don't have a full understanding of what the dog prophecy is specifically I can only under, I, I can only relate it to uh, Harley, who was, as we know, taken, uh, returned, and then the message of community came up because as soon as the dog arrived, we had all the neighbors, which we normally don't see on a daily basis, greeting around, greeting us around the house, as you mentioned, and it was it was very interesting. So. Um, Talk a little so bit this about this was of great. Well, this was, well, this was of um, great service to you, and to me, and to whoever understands this story. Is that this is a show of the cosmos, which is what the white dog and the three black cows were at six o'clock last night. It's a show. Are you awake? Wakey, wakey! Can you see me? I'm going to show up for you to see, and. There's great messages in it. These messages are not always for everyone. They're sometimes just for you personally, you know, and so we keep them to ourselves. But a lot of the time, if you're in the public eye, uh, it's like they know your service is for others. So that's who they come to. Or the ones that are able to speak clearly in a calm state, they will show for them so that they can show for them. It's a share. It's fair trade. This is the way of the new way. 
or the old way or the real way or the way. <laughs> so when these messages show up or happenings happen or accidents happen, <laughs> it's um, for you to see. Accidents are acts of the sea marking us. It's because you didn't see all the other messages or you did see them and you're ignoring them and it's they see or the energies or creation sees a greatness in you and they're going, how come they didn't see it? They didn't see the last message either. Okay, let's accident <laughs> to slow the human experience down so they take notice of the situation that's before them. And it's it's actually a, 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 an evolving of the soul, each person's soul. Yeah, what when you when you look at life itself, and we try to polarize things, it be it left or right, <laughs> or dark or or light, and there are, we don't look at the shades, and therefore we don't look at the answers in between those polarizations, and so there are different colors and spectrums. And so I sometimes think that we, as you just mentioned, we miss the subtleties of life because we want something profound as an answer, as opposed to taking the little steps that lead us to that profoundness of that bright light or that darkness. And so, yeah. and so, yeah. well, this, well, they... and I, and I, and, 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 and you're, you're seeing, yeah, you're seeing allows one like myself and others to see the, the shades and to see the quiet steps. As people say, sometimes people get hit with a feather or a brick in order to, if you get hit with the feather and awaken, or you need to get hit with the brick to really awaken. But the messages you're presenting that I'm seeing and that you're presenting to others are the feathers. But as you again said that it, it, you have to be the, awoken to the energies and to the timing or synchronicities of those events of there and not anchor to them because like you said with this election you said a lot of people are hanging on and when i say hanging on i see someone hanging or a worm hanging from an anchor waiting for a big fish to come along <laughs> you, you don't have to you, i mean this is a shepherd it's the anchor it's the ank of the core. Your shepherd is, uh, again, either side, you can have it as an anchor or a shaft. This is a shepherd. It's also a rod, a pillar. <laughs> this is to lead with. This shepherd shows up yesterday at six for me to understand um, the mark of the ones. The ones is us. The ones is the ones here on Gaia. It's the creatures of Gaia. It's the ones. It's the ones in act and the ones in witness. To only six is to see the the other one of you. So you see the act and then the witness of you. And uh, this is what they don't want us to see. Because <laughs> once you start seeing this and understanding it, I, I, everything else really does start to dissolve quite rapidly um the, the competition uh burden blame it all starts to fade away because you realize it's all within you to do whatever create inspires you of that moment now you might wake up and feel this energy through you go to sleep a few solar flares a couple of comets can last <laughs> wake up in the morning and you have a new agenda or a new role or a new will and that's okay too. You just let go of that one from the day before. You're allowed to change your mind. Uh, why do they have states, <laughs> territories right. to keep you in in a zone? It's control. Why do they have? Why do they want people to not be nomads? Because <laughs> they they don't want them to be gypsies. The gypsies were great collectors of information. This word gypsy doesn't come from nowhere. It's the gypsies of the stars. And uh, the gypsies of the stars have 
come to earth with the understanding of E. E is um a name of all the comets. It's E T. It's E is uh, alien or changes path or essence path. This is how we get the word Egyptians. Wow. It's all before us. I know, right? It's all before us. And I didn't learn this from reading. I learned this from a cow <laughs> and the stars and an emu and mythology. And I didn't learn it from um, someone I listened to. I'm learning it from happenings, presenting, sometimes hours before I come into meeting someone like yourself. You know the timing between some of our meetings. Yeah, <laughs> it's they they don't give me much leadway. They I mean we're six o'clock to now, we're talking twelve hours, I think. Yeah. Yeah, you, you they let me have a sleep on it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I had a, I had a thought that, that passed me, but I'm trying to think of it now. Um you you know, we, we we're all we're all looking to a, as you mentioned before, the attachment or the feeling of security and the feeling of knowingness that relies upon a pattern of waking up at a certain time, having a certain feeling, and when things go array, people get lost in, 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 in themselves. And we sometimes revert back to that, 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 that mindset of grasping and holding on. Um, I was talking to my daughter earlier this morning and she, she wrote me and she said about the election. Um, and she said, Oh, you predicted it. I said, well, I didn't predict it. I said, um, it, well, when I listen to people who inform me of information that is, is different than what the, the general public is hearing, then I'm already ahead of the game of understanding and looking at things from a different perspective. And so the information that you present, and the, the breadcrumbs that you throw in the path to lead the, the intellect into that opening of growth is fascinating. And, and just like when you learn something like a new subject, most people turn off to it because they don't know how to open up to it because they just, like when they watch a movie or a story, they have to know each specific part of the story in order to go to the next chapter. But you have to wait for the unfolding. And you could see the way the, the path is laid in order for it to go in that path. And so when you present information, it's like an education of the soul and an education of awakening. And, it, and it's, and, and for example, um, doing photography and taking pictures and seeing the sym symmetrical lines and the the messages that come through. When when you did photography yourself, did you see those lines and what they corresponded to years ago before you had this this shift in your life? So uh, prior to being a photographer in school, school um, all through my high school years in Australia we have six high school years we don't break it up it's just high school so we have primary school and then high school so in high school as an art student and um, uh, you know won a lot of awards and uh, I'd always um, go back to the the awe elements to create with so I, I used to love I would draw with charcoal and everyone says, you don't draw with charcoal. We're airbrushing, we're painting, we're doing this. And I said, I want to, I like charcoal. They said, yeah, but it's messy. And I went, I know, but it, I liked it. <laughs> so I always had like moustaches and things all over me. But with the charcoal, um, it's not, uh, not always the cleanest line and it smudges. And then uh, you can have, you can rub it back. And so uh, you could create inside the dark. So I would use an eraser to create highlights in the dark. So it was like a spiritual understanding of right. how art works. But also I did um, graphics, which is like architecture. And I was very, very good at it. 
I was so good that the teacher would ask me to come up and teach in the class, wow. which they found very annoying. And uh, that I would come up and um, I, I loved perspective of where one dot and a line and then the next dot, how this could change your uh, um, uh, your equilibrium. It could make you feel sick sometimes the way it would move, <laughs> where wow. the point would lead your eye. Yeah, so learning that mixed in with art by the time I became a photographer, they were just sort of absorbed in me. So uh, it's like when you go to learn something new, when you learn to drive a car, you're a kid and it everything's going, the uh, indicator, the brakes, all the signs, it's a lot to take on. You make errors because there's a lot of new stuff. But, um, I, you know, we get in the car and say the car drives us to the store the car knows the way because it's automatically in you. You don't need to know when to turn the indicator on. You just sort of automatically do it. Right. So these, what you're talking about, these lines of perspective were already sort of very embedded. So when I came in to do fashion photography, I was so inspired by the eye and uh, the, the, the key not nowadays because it's all automized, but the key for me was to um, have the eye sharp. That was that was the key. And so I would be, um, with zoom lenses and things, you'd be looking through the camera and zooming in on someone's eye all the time. Right. And, you know, I've got a feeling that was like a, awakening in me that I didn't know it was like because I'm I'm coming tight on someone's eye you don't even do this on your own eye right. <laughs> in the mirror yeah yeah what, so, I mean, what's this, sorry because so with your photography um how does it call you it calls me to the lines to the to the points where ah. they, to the lines where they start and to the point where it ends in the infinity, the feeling of infinity of like how how things come into almost a triangular pattern. And, uh, and then, well, and, this is <laughs> and and the meeting point. And so, what I'm what I'm fascinated with is are that the lines and these and these geo these geometrical patterns exist almost like like a like an architectural drawing that has color placed on top of it so a layer of life but behind, if you take the layer of life off then you come to your perspective of the lines that are behind or embedded in the the the, the, the structure of life so i i see i see the lines you know coming upon one another i remember i remember taking an art class and I was, I'm not a good drawer, but I did see, enjoy the patterns of, the, of drawing like New York, uh, the streets from a high building to a low building and following that, that, geog that, that line. I, 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 don't know what, I don't know what angle it is, but just I enjoyed that. That gave me structure, actually. It gave me a feeling of like pers a perspective of control of, of over life. Because at a time when things could be stressful, I like to have that and the photography as a means of bringing things in an organized pattern or ways of seeing things with, with the distraction of a, of, of a dog or, or a person to make it life lifelike, right? As opposed to just making it yeah. like a dead, dead, dead photograph. But it's, yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's so interesting because if you look at books on a shelf, I'm not a very organized person. I don't like order because I always found order and structure for me was a means of control as the way I grew up. There was like no, there was no, um, mad, there was no um, meaning behind the madness. It was just a matter of in order to give people a sense of peace. And, and I know that in, in terms of feng shui, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a positive thing to add positive energy and keep things organized. But as a child, when certain things are, have to be put in a certain place, and you want to go against the grain of that order. I think then you really go against the order of things that 
have a natural flow to them. And so I'm finding it now more so of trying to at least, I guess, through the photography, that's, that's, that's the way I do it. Although this is what they've done with our waters. They've created uh, different flows in the lands and you'll, you'll see through maps, the, the language of maps, they use the many words that describe how they drained the water from the lands. And this has shape shifted the energies of the lands. Sometimes it's created not so good things. Sometimes it's created other things um, that this um, it's the natural order on in flooding. It returns back to this. <laughs> it, it, in especially these great floods that we've had, and uh, us, our family personally have been through uh, one of the biggest ones in Australia. And uh, this, uh, it, we, we're still having changes from this in our life, <laughs> from this flood. Um, so they speak of the times of the flood, which is part of involved with the dog prophecy. This dog prophecy is about all the language of dog and God and understanding the paused <laughs> moments. Um, uh, they are, they have unconditional love. Uh, this is, uh, you've, if you follow, it's not one prophecy. I think there's like 22, <laughs> uh, you know, stemming um, obviously Nostradamus to other very famous um, poets and uh, um, seers over time. And they spoke of this time being the dog prophecy. They said when the white dog appears, the white dog was probably the 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 changeover for me because uh, our dog uh, we ran over our dog in the car and this is the the day of um, the first child <laughs> so it was the day I became the mothership. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> um, it was also the day that we went to this sacred site called the Beginning Place, where the uh, hieroglyphs and markings are in all the rocks um today is a great day in history not just for the election and you can always tell how the controlling agendas where they place things um this election is placed on this day because it's a huge day of understanding it's a huge day of show and tell <laughs> in many texts, not just one. And uh, I guess they show the importance. So I have at six o'clock, white dog, white shepherd shows up before me to lead the black moose. The black moose are the, the three meetings. <laughs> Meet. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and the, the most beautiful part of that simple story is that it is simple i did see it it was beautifully lit like it was like it was i actually videoed it because it was so pretty all the had all the field of wishes behind them <laughs> milk thistles and uh i'm looking to the west and this hill that i'm looking to is uh called indige in the indigenous language uh, the ringtail, the completion of tail. Wow. And it's a circle. These words, I'm that it's all sitting there. All this wow. all this is around us in space, <laughs> around us, around you and me. And you don't have to talk like this to have your day today, but what it is doing is it's unpicking all the anchors in us that are holding us in this state. And we're just unpicking them slowly, unpicking a few more, unpicking a few more. To be a weaver, sometimes you have to unweave to weave the new, and this is what we're doing. We're creating a web. We're unweaving and we're, some of us are picking it out, weaving it, picking it out, weaving it. And uh, 
from um i think we've got till the 3rd of november and the uh, 12th of the 13th we still have the second moon in the second moon is um the uh, uh, we believe is the daughter so you have the mata and the daughter and it's the energy of the moons is very female energy and uh, they're giving us only a little hint of it, like a month. <laughs> but this energy coming through is to realize that we are all Mata, Daughter, and the Ones, the Sons, the Father and the Son. We're the Fours, which is our pause. <laughs> yeah. It's the compass of us. It's all of us. You know, uh, sometimes you've been here as a father. Sometimes you've been here as a mother, but they're all in us. You cannot get here without one of them. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think the, what you said before, I, I know, again, I, this is what I wanted to say. And I said the attachment. The attachment is, is that I think it helps us become aware of also of our soul, of the the way the the body is 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 it is it separate entity in itself where we can detach ourselves from this experience by holding on to our soul and looking at the body as if it's like that suitcase and so when i looked at myself and see these things on me that i don't like i wanted to actually distance myself from myself and pull pull away a bit and look at myself as a soul down looking at my body and that's how i felt because i when we cl clinging to that anxiety or that nervousness, I'm not looking at it the way you're exp you're, you're verbalizing it, becomes uh, a, a difficulty because of the holding on part. And again, it's teaching me to let go, to, to look at it as, as an onlooker, as a bystander in my own life. And that's the hardest part because I'm looking for that attachment, that ego attachment at, at times, right? which we all are. And another thing, and I had a dream about two bulls um, months ago, about a month ago, I'd say, or three, two months ago. I don't know if it was two bulls or three bulls. They were running, uh, and they came to me. I don't know if they were buffalo or they were, as you said, moo. Um, but I, I felt them come and stop in front of me. Um, I, don't, I think they might have been horned. I'm not sure. But yeah, I had that kind of experience. Where we, where we used to live, we had uh, two bulls. Uh, and I used to call them yin and yang because one was white and one was black. And so I would um, say, you know, uh, sweet words in the morning to like, some people call them um, affirmations, I guess. But I would just say my words in the morning or in the sunset or just before a storm. And it was like they heard, you know, they could be paddocks acres away and they would, it was like they felt my energy or the kids' energy and, and, and then they would call it in and they do this bull call where they call in all the, the herd. And I used to think, at first I used to think, oh, that's a coincidence. <laughs> and then I realized I don't like that word because it's silly. It's not yeah. a coincidence. It's a meeting and an alignment and uh it's they would call it in and it became so much that uh you'd say well hang on they're late <laughs> but it's not just them now it's kookaburras it's um willy wagtails it's grasshoppers it's there it's other people it's other encounters it's solar flares and they and then people say, well, you're egoic. And I'm saying, oh, really? It... <laughs> yeah, okay. You can say it's egoic. Okay, say it's egoic. I'm not saying that. I'm saying this is the magic in me. And right. the magic, if the magic's in me, it can't just be in me. The magic's in the children. The magic's in the bull. I, to, to say it's me is egoic because you're saying that um, it, the bull has no idea. The bull has a lot of ideas, probably a lot more than we do. This uh, white bull, though, 
this white and black bull, we haven't seen them for three or four years because they they were on the old farm and then the old farm sold, so they got separated. Uh, probably last week, I was going for a drive, um, a new to new lands, and the I'm not sure if it's the exact same ones because I thought they were separated, but it looked like they were there together again in these new lands. And um, as we drove past in the car, I felt them look at me. And I was like, wow. So it's interesting. You, It's like, you know, we had this two-year journey and today is, today is completion in astrology. And it's also a, a new election as well, outcome. <laughs> yeah. So... We still have them, so we still have this mother-daughter energy in. So it's like the mothers and daughters have come in. <laughs> They've ruffled the whole house, cleaning it up. <laughs> right. To say, okay, let's let's start the the new now. So embrace their mother-daughter energy in the masculine and the feminine in the new ways that it unfolds for each person and um, use all the so-called problems as a uh, cosmos energy to say, you're a great one. You're so great. I'm going to have to wake you up with this mark or this illness. Because by you, Understanding and being a, uh, an eyewitness to this, or a, a, a C act, or a understanding the versions of you and healing this in you might heal so many others. Like it's, you know, we, we've noticed through the healings that we've had to go through in our family. Um, no matter what the medical industry says to us, it it doesn't matter to us because we're like, that's fine, but <laughs> we have seen bones, big bones, knit in days. Amazing. Days. Yeah. But in your brain, you think it's a solid structure. You you don't believe it. Oh, the same with teeth. You don't believe this yeah, well, either. Be but because of how we... It becomes it becomes an ex, an experiment that we need to take. Yeah. And that 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 like removes us from holding on to what we've known and holding on to that handrail of of of. I'll go to the doctor, go to the doctor, go to the doctor, and 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 the impulse and to fight that is empowering, when you've overcome something and have a support system, of family, or people who are like minded. And the only way we can attract that is by being the example, I think, like being the person who goes through that experience and then to then tell the next person, okay, I've, you don't need your GPS. I'll tell you where to go. And if you listen to me, you'll get there. But we're so hell bent on finding that specific um, comfort and we've been comforted into a delusion. So I think everything and like, like you, you mentioned, I mean, Lyme disease, for example, was like a real dark night of the soul. But as you mentioned, in terms of, which is something I wanted to touch upon, which was somewhat galactic DNA and some of the, the, the processes that people will experience or go through. But for me, I know Lyme disease was a real dark night of the soul that made me become really, trying to become self-reliant. I had a dream that I got bit by the tech. And I saw the bug on me in my dream. And then I went to the doctor and I said to the doctor, I said, please give me, just give me a blood test. He goes, for what? I said, I got bit by a tick. He said, what do you mean? He says, where did you get? I said, I don't know. I said, but I just, if you could check. So he said, sure enough. Yeah. And so those, those moments, those um, prophetic moments that take place or the pre premonitions we have, which put us on the path of the healer of, the seer. Um, it's so so true what you're saying. So uh, 
so Lyme, Lyme disease is a connection that Adam and I had because two, I think it was two weeks or 10 days before I met Adam, I got bitten on my head. <laughs> I think it was this one. Oh, it could have been another one, but anyway, I, no, a year ago, last week, I was bitten on my head and a, uh, I had ma, free marks and the kids took a, a picture of it. Uh, and it caused great discomfort. It shut it shut down. Always it seems to attack my right side here and it shut me down. And um, you'll see, I actually have a crooked smile still. It, my smile's coming back. It took my smile away. <laughs> uh, I'll make this stuff up. Uh, anyway, so it took a picture and it looked like a wolf or a dog. The last Dalmatian puppy we had looked like this dog on my head. Really? He's he's just gone to a home. It was very hard for me to let go of this puppy. Um, he's just gone to a home. This is, again, the dog prophecy. He has gone to a home to heal a man. Yeah, I, saw, I see that. And I knew that if I kept this puppy, it wouldn't heal him. I knew that if I kept the puppy for myself, who I love so much, this puppy, his eye connection with me and this mark on my head, and he, I used to call him wolf eyes. Anyway, he has gone to this man and uh, they just sent me a text yesterday, actually before the cows, they sent me a text saying um, he's become his shadow. He will not leave this man's side. He said it, this man was um, has a so-called terminal illness. Yeah, I see it. I see what's going on. He doesn't, even, he doesn't even know. He's so busy with this dog. The dog's keeping him so busy. He's, they've sent me so many videos and photos, and it, um, you know, I, I just know. You just know. Yeah, yeah. That, that I know. But that do that dog's a high soul, a high, very high soul, as if it's like an older person than the man mm. itself. And it's a wise, it's like a wise dog watching, saying, "I can't believe you can't keep up with me," and something like that, and. Almost like a like a mother like a mother figure like a grandmother watching over. Yeah, yeah. interesting. These are the words they used in the text. They said, "We can't keep up with him. He's like a cyclone, yet he's always at our side." Yeah, yeah. And wow. Uh, wow. He, they said in their relationship, uh, it was exactly they really needed him, and this is what they speak of in this dog prophecy. This is what's happening to many is um, that's great what you think you need, but your soul in these days now will be calling in what it needs. And um, we've had things present to us and show up for us and it says, okay, now it's time. Now it's time is not, when I say the words time, time, I don't think of as tick tock, tick tock. TikTok time to me is um, the essence, which is what it. This is where the word came from. Time, the sense, the sense of time is thy me. It's the ones action. So when I say it's time, it's it's the meeting of us, uh, the in ourselves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So when you say it's time or when you said that uh, you follow the alignments, al alignment is lion. So you're following loyalty and courage to yourself. So you create yeah. a beautiful picture. <laughs> I just I just heard bells going off, like a, like a bell being rung. Like, in other words, like the, the it, it's 12 o'clock. The, the the hands are aligned and the bells are going off and people are running in the streets to get somewhere like action that's what i just saw people running like i see france i see something in in europe on a cobblestone street of running or well, it seems like going to school or getting on time to school making sure to be on time to school um for yourself but so school is run all around time. Yeah. And you were a teacher of um, uh, physical education. So you're uh, showing little ones things that they can do with their bodies.
And now you're showing others things they can do with spirit. Yeah. <laughs> so you did one half through this life and this That's half through the That's other. And it's a meeting of Wow. Yeah. It's it's so when you start to um see and speak of this with you know older words and not all the gooped up words and mix it in with what's going in your day to day it becomes like this really beautiful story of you whatever your story is yeah and the next person so everyone's story is amazing so now we share our stories we tell our stories and then they share and tell and everyone grows up together <laughs> Yeah, because we're, we've been in a bit of a hold. <laughs> oh, absolutely, can feel can feel that. Feel that. But, but passing the baton. Yeah, passing the, the baton. Yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. Explain the the meeting, the meeting. Like, how did you know? Yeah, well, this is another one for you. <laughs> uh, well, the this, I felt so when. The farmer next door sold, uh, there was a herd of uh, 80 cattle and then there were the three black strays. They, Their whole family are teleported somewhere they don't know and they they hid in the forest, in the pine trees. He asked, does anyone want to go? They could feel the energy of the, the farmer and the transporter and they just hid. And... Uh, they would call, be calling all night and all through the day when humans weren't around to see where where are they? Call them home, like a bell. And uh, I would wake up. It would, it, it, you know, we prior to this, we actually lived on a a, a meat farm, <laughs> uh, which it was very challenging. Uh, living on farm really does uh, bring to the forefront factory farming in a big way. So. It makes you see uh, where your food comes from <laughs> and how it's treated before you digest it. So uh, this has been a big journey for myself and the family. Um, some of the family, would they eat meat again? That's fine. Everyone has their journey. So you do what you need. There's no right or wrong in this again. There's no judgment. But these calling cows I could feel their sorrow it was more than that they were calling me out they were so close to our house they had acres and acres of paddocks to go to and they come to our house like yesterday yeah. this is what when they show up on these times and these dates at this certain point when they can go anywhere in the paddocks <laughs> but they choose to come here they don't have uh, a schedule. Right. Why are they choosing to come here? This is the same with the whales. This is what I tell others is that this alignment of these creatures, of other humans together, these meeting points, is me, E.T. <laughs> meat is, you know, a lot of people call it a meat suit. It, we, it is meat. It is a, it's a... It's a shell or a husk or a hull with the the wet ones in it, the four, <laughs> our muscles, right. the bone. Yeah. And, but it also then has the essence of us in it. It also has the others. <laughs> the, the others are the ones that are not coping with this time right now the others are very small the others knew this time was coming and this is why they're in a panic this is why they're creating all the drama because they know their cycle isn't going to work through the next cycle they don't know why they just sensed it so this is why they've constructed everything to this situation that humans are in now with food and uh, politics and 
That's why it's all crumbling. Because yeah. the ones that are inside are the main ones have already left, but they've left all the other ones just a little bit under them. And uh these ones don't know where to place themselves. This uh, election is quite interesting though. Yeah. Yeah, what what is uh, the what is the not to get the confirmation? Bored. Yeah, the confirmation, yeah. So it's so it's interesting. It's like how time right how how it passes and how things become mm. people don't know that they don't know the becoming because people take such so, such such joy in drama and and yeah and and distracting from themselves which doesn't give them the opportunity to see nor the ability to meet and I think it's yeah. just just a tiny switch that takes place. I always used to tell my students, all right, if we walk a straight line, but we turn our foot to the left just slightly, as you keep going on that path, as you know, you're going to be walking completely miles away from where you, the other person initially started walking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this I, is like building. So yeah. I, yeah. One little bit here is way out over here. Right. So it's an only have to change it by increment, like a t but this is a, a line thing again, right? But also you mentioned once before the retina, the eye shift and the perspective of yeah. looking at things from a different angle or oh, well, could, you, could you explain that a little so bit? This, this, yeah. Well, this is coming. So it keeps coming back to these, these art classes, um, uh, and the art class teacher said uh, some of the most amazing artists he had come across had Down syndrome. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, I was like, so what do you mean? He said they would, had Down syndrome. So um, I, I believe Down syndrome is this supposed to be missing something. But anyway, he said they would draw upside down. And I said, what do you mean they would draw upside down? He said, the way a lot of the Down syndrome, they would draw upside down. And this is what would happen in the camera as well. Right. The mirror is right. upside down. Yeah. So I found that really interesting. Anyway, he said, you should draw, draw upside down. That's what he said to me. Wow, wow, wow. And he goes, oh, but you're going to create such a mess. You got charcoal. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this sounds cool. So um, I would go upside down and draw upside down by drawing upside down you turn the uh trained mind off and allow spirit through more and so it's just again power of observation it's like you said just changing that that line where you look at something and uh so by changing that one line of looking some at something, so like how you look at a word or understand a word, really gives you um, a whole nother world of it. Yeah. But like time. Yes. This word time has, by understanding that it comes from the actual herb, herbs are here to heal, <laughs> and it's your senses. This is sense time. Once you sense time, not know the time, it the information just comes through. So uh, this uh, turning me upside down to draw like these Down syndrome, my artwork was much better. <laughs> wow! How did you how did you do that? You saw you you looked at the opposite effect. How did you draw? How did you do that? Well, this comes back to dog prophecy. So the, uh, now I'm reflecting back on my art and yeah, so now yeah. I'm reliving it. So the first things in art that I would draw was because um, everyone would comment on how big I got really long hands. And so I, I thought, okay, well, what am I going to draw upside down with charcoal? It's not going to be too messy. And then I looked at my hands. I went, oh, they're so bony and long. I'll draw them. So I would draw um, sign language. Um, all the different sign languages of the fingers. Always off. I was always drawing my left hand. 
but I could draw because it wasn't, I didn't have to go and get anything or so it kept the charcoal area clean. <laughs> and so I draw upside down. So I would draw all the, um, the wrinkles and creases in my skin. And, uh, I actually didn't know that I could draw, but when I would flip up the other way to look at what I had done, I was like, wow, this is actually really accurate. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Yeah. So then I think of the accuracy being upside down by switching off what I thought. And so, um, you know, this is a, a, a lot of um, great messages come through art. Uh, Michelangelo, all the, uh, all the um, Renaissance, all the, all the sculptures. Uh, every it's like in ballet, every single movement is a story being told in the show of that creation, and every uh, artwork is doing the same thing to us when you look at it or photograph. So. The experience of Adam seeing the lines. <laughs> Sorry, I always laugh because Adam's name means um, atom. <laughs> so Adam seeing the lines, <laughs> not only do you see them, the viewer who sees your photograph goes through the journey of it as well. Not necessarily the full journey, but they... So See. by creating something that you love, creates love in somebody else right yeah see how it's contagious oh absolutely that's why they can't they really cannot stop this they no. cannot stop it it's it's gone way past stopping it now i it's a good feeling i have i my it says my storage is full i want to erase something i have my i was on <laughs> could you imagine that, that that's so interesting that, that's a real message in itself yeah 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 i don't know yeah. Oh. I, I was going to erase. Uh, let me just pause it for a second. This way I could just. This way I don't... <laughs> Are you? Okay. Back to pause. We're back from our pause. <laughs> Pew. Um, yeah. I, I, I've, I've learned many. I, I, I can't hear you. Well, you've had this, this pause. You had the white dog show for you. And this is this was um, a terror moment, you know, losing your dog. Yeah, I was. I wanted to tell you and that you I, can't think straight. I've been. I've been you so can't stressed. Think straight. Your loved one's been ripped from you. You know, this the, the I, I it's it, not planned. <laughs> no, no, but it, it brought up so many aban either aban I don't know abandonment feelings or feelings of being with me alone after having been with Harley every moment, and so I didn't recognize. I wouldn't say I didn't recognize myself. I didn't recognize my movements without her. I See, I think this is how I feel with this situation. It's a it's a crisis moment. And what happens with crisis moments is we think it's the end game. And we've gone through a huge crisis in the last month. And what we have come to understand from this crisis moment is if you can go within and heal this crisis moment in yourselves, that the, the great power from this is... Uh, unexplainable and i i felt that this was harley the white dog when the white dog shows up the god dog prophecy is coming to show this version of you how great you are and you brought your community together people say how am i going to change the world i'm going to do this i'm going to do that you did it through Pain, suffering, tears, yeah. loss, yeah, and you and they all came together. And this is what I visualize with your dog missing is this. But 
this moment of all your neighbours coming together, you have no idea now where this will go. It's amazing. Yeah, I, I, I feel it. I feel the we, power. I feel the power of it. I, I didn't feel the. I feel the power through your interpretation, and that is helping assists me because then I could see it from a different perspective, but understanding your perspective of how how, how I can now see it differently. But again, again, you. I look don't at, know. Go ahead. Sorry, one second delay. So, uh, uh, I don't. Not sure how many neighbors appeared in this gathering. But uh, we've had the years before where everyone wasn't allowed to talk to everyone and everyone became very scared of other humans. So we were already becoming an anti-social yeah. <laughs> society. And then the last two years told us we can't talk to each other. Now it's a law. <laughs> You're not allowed to talk because it's, you know, danger. But now this white dog through humility and compassion and just pure love has brought all these people together the day before Halloween. Are you kidding me? It said all of you be on the lookout, on the watch before the children go out. Not to attack others or guard others, but be alert. How do you know you didn't stop something much worse going on. Well, I did. I actually told the neighbor, I said, now it's maybe it's it, this was the message to now watch your child when they cross the street because the cars are going whizzing by oh. very fast. And she yeah. looked at me, she looked in my eyes with such intent and and, 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 and and like an emergency took place. And I told all of them, I said, that was, this was a message for everybody to take heed of the children when they're driving their bikes crazily in the streets without looking. And I said, Holly was the example of what can happen being taken or something being being taken. Yeah. So this is the movie. Uh, this is a great movie. Uh, I love this movie. I love the music in it too. It, it haunts me. The Adjustment Bureau, and they talk of the black angels or the hat ones who are the controllers, and they have a uh, forecast of what's supposed to happen. And so they create little... Uh, deviations in the human life like angels and they come down and they knock the coffee or but uh, somewhere in there great ones realize who they are and they realize they don't need we don't need you to papa to me i've got this i've got this i've got this it's okay thank you for your help but i've got this and so they steer their own course now like the the guys in the hats freak out because they've never had this before <laughs> and so they think it's wrong but a, a couple of them and apparently so-called creator or headquarters said allow him to be in the end of the movie i'm sorry it's a bit yeah. of a spoiler alert but um <laughs> but in this movie um there were ones in the suits um, you could call them men in black or whatever. They, yeah. they, they did allow the ones that knew themselves and the ones that could walk their path. He said, "Let them be. Let them, let them walk their path. Their own path. You cannot interfere with that one." What's what's and the name of it? What's the name of that movie? People speak of this. Adjustment Bureau. It's lovely. It's about um, a politician. Ah, oh, this is funny with the election. Oh, there's great election stories in there. And he falls in love with a creator, a dancer. Now, see, a dancer is a creator. It's expression. So the creator showed the politician who he really was, and it was love. He, he just loved her. It's a love story. It's not a love story with them. I mean, Hollywood makes it the love story. It's all about the love of them. And this right, is right. another thing Hollywood has done. It's made it all about man and female. But it's once you love you, like love this version of you, then all the other love's great. It's easy. <laughs> yes. It's, it, it, it's, it's, it's the angels controlling the humans and now the humans using AI or being under the jurisdiction of artificial intelligence to now rule us in some in some capacity at workplaces and other things. So 
we're, either we're giving our responsibility, our, our power away, or we're not recognizing the power we have. But again, as you mentioned, which is profound, that journey of suffering, there's nothing like it. And it's something that brings foresight into, into one's own life and then casts the, the shadow of light, actually light, to help others putting a flashlight on their path to walk and trusting your navigation. So we're, we're always relying upon something and we're in the transition of now relying upon the meeting of others whose path has been, I was going to say in German, I don't know why, there's a word, erleuchtet, lit up a bit by our own suffering. So we become lighter when we suffer and we, we work through it. And we, be, we become physically lighter, but we also become brighter as well in, in the darkness. Be because you become a Christ is... Which is, is, is. Oh, wow. Which That's is interesting. The cross, which is your center, which is your spleen, which is the compass, which is the fifth element, which is blue shiva. To see blue is light. Blue means light. There was no word for blue. Blue means light. And this is uh, the blue ones are coming. This is the Hopi prophecy. And, uh, the Egyptians could see blue, but then the ones after couldn't for a while. So, but well, they you, knew we were coming because we would see blue. Your aura see is blue. Your yeah, aura is we're all, the ones. all blue. Yeah, your blue, the blue is yeah. emanating, <laughs> emanating. Even though you have a blue background, the pulsation of blue is, comes right out of you. A blue. It's, it's just so yeah. powerful. Um, well, what's interesting? Interesting in my, I'll just, one thing that I found really weird is um my family have, my immediate family, my parents, have brown eyes. So I'm not meant to have blue eyes. That's interesting. Yeah. Wow. But the power of blue in the, the actual color or the magic trick of blue is a will of blue. And even uh, many brown-eyed people actually have the blue eye gene in them. It's I think it's 98% of the population, even the Asian culture. Yeah, it's in them. So it's in most of us. Yeah. Well, my parents, yeah, my parents, the, the whole family is either green or, or, or blue-eyed. Yeah. Um, mm. Very interesting. Um I was going to I was going to ask you one more thing. I think about the solar flares. Um, I'm meeting I'm meeting uh, Karen Hort uh, Karen at uh, three o'clock. I haven't uh, I'll, I'll erase this part anyway. But I'm just um, I think I covered everything. So Karen, I sent Karen posted a beautiful a beautiful video of um, the dogs how dogs are in natural life, how they spread love. And I cried when I saw it. I'm not sure where she got it from, but I just watched it and I sent her a text message. This is before I spoke with you about your dog. I sent her a text message and I was like, oh my gosh, this touched my soul. It reminded me of all the moments of us humans. I said, thank you for sharing it. And I said, it's part of the dog, you know, this is part of the dog prophecy. And then uh, I think it was in 24 hours later, I get that text from you. Yeah. I, I, I never expected. So and my heart felt for you. You know, I really helped, felt for you. So. I was very, I was very quiet. Obviously I'm quiet about it because people were making a big hoopla about it. But to me, I'm connected to her so deeply that nothing could take away that, that disconnect I felt. And I, and, and seeing her roaming on the ring on the cameras of people's houses looking for me, like sniffing the whole place, each house, I saw the desperation that it caused. And it almost brought me back to, did, did, I think when we love, when we're able to love ourselves and we almost are on that path to doing it, I think then when we meet the dog, 
or have an animal in our lives, we're able to then give that love extraneous to ourselves where I wasn't able to do that in the past. I had animals, but I didn't have a connection because I didn't work on parts of myself of trying to reorganize or bring myself together and loving me or self-love, as you mentioned before. So anyhow, Holly's sitting on the floor here and uh, she's, she's listening to the conversation. Yeah. She's, she's listening to the yeah. conversation. Well, it's now time for us to realize our ones and be the great story of ourselves. And there still will be hardship and tears and contrast, but uh, it's it want the it's contagious. It's yeah, it's the way. So it's everyone feels it coming. So okay, the election is sort of a journey of it, I guess. So yeah. Yeah, it, it woke it woke people up to maybe the the gaslighting and the narcissist personalities that take place in their own lives, and I think that's what mm. this somehow does because the people who are working on being gaslit or encountering the narcissist energy, who've worked on that and and moved forward in that path, have can now look and and see it in the in the in the public eye, and the things that you brought up are very fascinating. The movie that you just mentioned, um, so I was very um, intrigued with, with today's conversation and all the information that, that came through. Um, and uh, if there's anything else you'd like to share that comes to mind. Just uh, just thank you for being, you know, uh, human, humility, and, uh, and thank you for sending me the message saying, can you help? Because sometimes we do need help, oh, and that's... it's very brave. It's very brave to do this. And if you need help, and ask for help Thank from you. someone. Yeah, yeah from I, someone. I, that, that was a major thought of mine. Actually, I have to say, so you hit you hit on a, an important note, and a very important note, tuned for me because I, I bring in personal stories. But I had a conversation with my mother yesterday, who says, "You don't come and visit me anymore, or you're not visiting me." And I said to her, she's, 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 un she's unwinding because my father's having, psych having cognitive problems and she really doesn't like the company of too many people in her space. But now it's become to a point where come and leave, but just come. And it somehow, I don't know what it did to me. It, we, it, it triggered me in something in me. When I, she said to me, why don't you come visit? And I said, I'd like to come and I will. Oh, you know what? I don't need you to come. And so that back and forth of, re, of, of being vulnerable on her end, her inability to be vulnerable and to be open about something, of, of, of needing help or needing company. And as you just mentioned, finding a person or the right people where you, you can at least feel that you're not stepping on anybody's space or boundary or being, I guess, depending upon where we come from, by asking, am I being annoying? Yeah. That's... Well, this well, comes back to that story with the white dog and the three cows showing up. I didn't invite them to come. They just showed up. They were right. only there for five minutes, and then they left. Yeah. And maybe that's what your mother's asking. She's just not asking you to stay there for an hour. She just wants you to come. For, she just wants to cite you. And feel your frequency and then go. That's enough. Yeah, maybe. Okay. There's yeah. no wrong or right. Like, you know, this visiting, everyone thinks with the meeting, it has to be this long time. It, it can be it can be a fleeting meeting. <laughs> oh, right, right. I, well, I think people have gotten used to Zoom meetings where they have to go at least 30 minutes to an hour. But you're right. That's a good <laughs> point. That's a good point. I know. Now we have to end. I know. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Yeah. Thank you, Adam. Yeah, I, I appreciate Thank your time. You. I appreciate your insight and uh, continuing on this path of uh, understanding and connecting uh, what 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 lies ahead and what landmarks will be visited on the way. So thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, thank you. Just...